Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So, you know, I, as I was preparing for this talk, well, I should say, as my buddy nudged me to prepare this talk, he was saying um, St. Con was needing some different talks, and they wanted some intro talks. So I decided that um, as my position, um, about three weeks ago it changed, but before I was kind of the sim guy at um, my last company. So um, I had another guy that I came to, one of my previous coworkers as well, and I said, hey, I need a catchy title. And so as you can see, he tried to, he made this up for me. So I told him from now on, I'm always gonna employ him as the guy that comes out up with the titles for my talk. So um, just a little bit about me. Um, my name's Nathan Smith. I'm at Nate Zone on Twitter. Um, currently, I'm working as a security analyst at Sor Sorensen Media. Um, so this is my very first SaintCon presentation. I've done one at B-Sides. Um, and my previous role included some red and blue team activities. I do a little bit more red than I do blue now. Um, but I feel there's value in knowing both sides. So first question that I have for you um, is, how many of us worry about the visibility we have in our organization? I see quite a few hands, perfect. And so, what would you say is your number one worry? You know, raise your hands, shout out, whatever you wanna do. What's your number one worry about your organization currently? What you don't know, exactly. So, that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit, is what is a SIM, a SIEM, however you wanna pronounce it. Um, and so, here's the Wikipedia definition. So it's just a, information and event management that takes in a bunch of different logs, um, whether that's from your firewalls, your systems, um, your printers, whatever it may be, the SIM is a centralized logging source that can gather all that data for you. Um, so this simplified version is just really that system that centralizes security logs and events. So quick um, scenario is probably all of us get into this situation where we're supposed to be considered the expert. Um, and it could be a new technology, like SIMs really aren't that old um, as far as the implementation goes. And so in my last position, I was kind of in this exact same thing. I'd never touched a SIM in my life. And my boss, the way he liked to phrase everybody or present people is that you were a god in a certain area. And so he came up and says, you're gonna be the SIM god. And whenever somebody has a question about SIMs, I want you to answer that question. He's like, whether you know it or not, you need to research it, you need to be really good with it. Um, and he gave me three to six months to be spun up. And then the next thing was that um, there's gonna be no training involved. I just needed to get my, my feet wet with this experience. So we had one of the commercial SIMs. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't using open source. Um, we were actually using LogRhythm. Um, and so if anybody you've actually used LogRhythm, it's pretty, it goes pretty deep. Um, there's a lot of different moving parts and pieces. And in our system, we had around seven servers that we had to manage. Um, a few of them being collectors, but a lot of them had different purposes. And sometimes, th sometimes they were even dual purpose. But it was up to me to make sure that we had all the vital systems in the beginning. And then from there, it grew to... Um, not just vital systems, we needed to understand um, what other systems should we be gathering that we're not gathering at this moment. Just because, as most of you are aware, the commercial solutions are based on a messages per second. So the more systems that you have in your SIM, the more costly it becomes. And so that's why a lot of people are proponents of open source, because if you can get those set up, there's not that ghastly cost every year of when a you have to get five to 10,000 messages per second on your renewal license. So the next thing for a SIM, um, when I was, I really like this quote, is that a watchtower is pointless if there's no watchman inside. So we may have a security team and we may be in charge of watching things, but if we don't actually have that handle on different things, then we're going to be without that visibility. Um, so there's a few different reasons why we should actually use a SIM. Um, and I'm going to throw that question out to you guys. Why would you want to use a SIM? What do you think it would provide benefit for you? Okay. 
Okay, the, he said work smarter, not harder. That's a, that's a good reason. But what other reasons would you say? Forensics, it's a great option. So yeah, one main reason people like is centralized logging. If you um, have one source, you can try to have a source that can't be modified, a source that you can trust. The next thing would be correlating data. So if you start having an attack on your firewall, and if somebody actually came through and got onto the system, you would need both logs to be able to actually correlate that data if so something was an incident and did occur. The next thing for a lot of us, um, and this is kind of in my last position, is compliance. So a lot of compliance, they want to have centralized logging and they want to have certain reports, um, whether that's PCI, HIPAA, FedRAMP, um, whatever you're doing, they like having um, that visibility, that audit data. Um, we even had to, I think we had 25 reports that we had to review daily that for, as part of compliance. The next thing is alerting. So we're human and we, we all need sleep. So setting up a system like a SIM allows for us to get some of that sleep and it can alert us on some of those events. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about the types of alerts because if you use a commercial system, those alerts, a lot of them are pre-written for you. Um, the next reason is retention. Again, retention revolves around compliance or that could be company policy. You could be the one that's setting up that policy um, of how long you actually want to retain the logs um, of the different applications you use. And then like was said, forensic analysis. Um, we want to make sure that those logs have not been modified, that if an incident occurred, we can retrieve those logs. If someone was fired and they were upset when they got let go, what did they do? What tracks did they, did they leave behind? So then the next um, thing we want to talk about is what options do you have? So there's with open source, these are just a few of the ones that I quickly gathered. Um, there's Greylog, there's OSSIM, there's Elk Stack, and there's Sim Monster. They're all similarly based around the Elk Stack, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kavana, which helps you to kind of get the, the pretty, gra pretty graphs, the way to pull in the logs so that you can collect all those logs. Um, and then the next option is we, we do have some commercial options. So like I said, I've, I've used LogRhythm. Um, I've also dealt with Alien Vault and Alert Logic, but some of the big ones are HP ArcSight, um, IBM's Q Radar, and there's more and more each day. Um, someone else is coming out with a, a different type of SIM. And so um, real quick, I want to kind of give you guys a quick demo of what Alien Vault has given to us. So let me just pull that up real quick. So we're already up. Okay, so as you can see here, um, this is kind of some different graphs that a, a sim can show you. Right now, this is just going to be a basic overview. Um, and again, this is Alien Vault's open source version. Um, you can come into their open thread exchange, and this is what they tout very heavily. Um, because as much as we do on a daily basis, the more community resources we have involved with our sim instance, the better because they may be attacked by something different. They may have some um, indicator of compromise that we've never seen. And the more you deal with the community and the more you're willing to give to that community, um, you're, the more you'll be able to get out of it. The next thing is a lot of us um, may be familiar with the different types of cloud instances that are around. Um, one of the big ones right now is AWS. Um, for, uh, for me and my current responsibilities, that's, that's kind of what we need to get our hands around is AWS and trying to see what some common attack vectors are. Um, you can put in your systems that are all inside of AWS and you can also get operational stuff in that regard. So um, I'd encourage you if you've never touched a SIM or anything, just go out to Alien Vault. You know, um, you may you have to give away your email and a phone number. So you may want to create a throwaway number. Um, and also throw an email that you can send them to if you don't actually have interest in 
purchasing their product, but they'll let you demo this. They'll let you play around and see some different things, some different um, dashboards and visibilities that their product would give to you. Okay, so the key considerations that I've had in the open source versus commercial um, is one is, is this your first time setting up a SIM? So if you go open source, there's quite a learning curve. Um, if you've never touched a SIM before, open source may not be the option for you. That also um, depends on the amount of documentation that they have around that. Again, that's why Elk Stack is so big, is because there's so many people contributing, there is quite a bit of documentation around it. But um, that also comes with um, without support. So if something like crashes on your system or some service isn't happening, you can go to Stack Exchange and hope somebody answers your question. Or the commercial solutions have their dedicated support staff. So then you need to consider, okay, what kind of um, situation is my company in? And then deadlines. So how soon do you need to have this system in place? Um, if it's like any of the previous companies I've worked for, sometimes the deadlines are super short and unrealistic. So um, even with commercial solutions, it's going to be hard to deploy a SIM in a sor short amount of time and actually have everything functioning the way that you want it. So it, it kind of feels like this to me, is that, you know, the building's on fire. We don't want to be in there, you know. So next question is, you know, how much work is it going to take to set up? So the first thing is it's going to take your time. So how much time do you truly have to dedicate to this? Do you have a junior level guy that can just spend all of his time on this? Or are you the only security guy? So um, that's a key consideration because for us, it was there's a lot of remote logs that you can gather and there's a lot of systems, but if you're working as more of an instance of um, a fire inspector, and when I say fire inspector, I mean you don't have the hands-on access to actually make the changes. You are waiting on somebody from like an operations team or a system admin administrator level team. So you need to know, do I have to work with other teams? That's another consideration on your time. Um, the next thing to consider is money. Do you guys have budget for a SIM? Like I said, if you have thousands of devices and they're noisy devices, if they're web servers, if they're public facing, if you're a cloud, uh, a cloud company that offers some um, SaaS type environment, you need to know you're gonna get hit heavily if you add all of your systems right away. Um, that was actually for us, that was one of the, the main deterrents, even though um, our deployment of our commercial solution wasn't as expensive as people thought. When they were trying to go out there and actually get a quote, they put in a few servers and then they said, okay, we put in 100 servers, we have another 1,500 to go, so let's times this, this message per second by 15, and that's how many messages per second we need, which isn't always the case because some servers are a lot more chatty. Some servers are used a lot more frequently so like when you're pulling in those security event logs from a Windows server, they not, may not be hit as often as, let's say, um, your firewall, where someone's not always logging in. Um, if it's a firewall that is protecting your edge, that's a different story. You're going to get a lot of logs. So then you have to determine, can I consume traffic, or can, do I only consume the threat data that those firewalls allow? Um, again, you need to consider the internal investment. How many people are um, actually supporting this effort of yours to get a SIM set up? Is your director or your manager saying, hey, you know what, this is what I want you to focus on for the next three to six months and get this set up. I'm going to take everything off your plate. Great. But a lot of us, that's not the case. We're going to be saying, get this set up, or you're also s getting set up a vulnerability management program. And you also need to do the security awareness. And then you also have to do many more things. You have to do your code reviews. You have to do your penetration testing. So a lot of us wear many hats. So make sure that these are all considerations that you're, um, you're doing. The next thing to consider is what type of log sources do you have in your environment? You may have 
Linux, you may have Mac, you may have um, Windows if you're trying to pull corporate data. Um, a lot more people um, are just Linux and Windows inside of their, their production environments. So you need to remember how many log sources do I have in total to do it. The next one is you need to, you need to really choose whether you're going to collect all versus collect some. So, you know, if to I guess to receive true visibility in your network, you want to collect all of them. But is that feasible? Um, the other option is to collect just some of them. So in the beginning when we were deploying our commercial solution, we decided that we'd do all the edge devices. And then beyond the edge devices, we want to do all the DMZ devices. Any device that a customer could reach from um, outside of our network, someone that we would have to consider um, not necessarily, an, they're not an attacker, but at in the same sense, an attacker could reach that resource. We wanted to have some sort of logging. We wanted to have some sort of collection on that data. The next thing is alerts. So how many people have actually set up a SIM before? Okay, so you guys are familiar with the, what we call alert burnout. You know, when you're first setting up a SIM, you're going to get so many different alerts because when these commercial solutions get set up, they want to alert on everything. But there's a lot of things that you need to take into consideration in your environment, which would be, is this normal in your environment? You know, um, so in my last company, we were a cloud contact center. So they would always alert when these random countries would be connecting in with our system. But that was normal for us because we had customers from everywhere. So it's not necessarily a, a threat actor, someone trying to do malicious things to us. So we had to tune down the alerts that way. So there's a variety of different alerts that you're going to want to turn on. There may be some that you want to turn off, but you need to review those. And that, again, takes time. And then the, the next thing is being able to scale the SIM. So our big issue is that we thought an all-in-one box would be perfect for us. Um, even though we had about, like I said, we had 1,600 servers in the beginning, but that just doubled um, within a year's time. So when we first got this all-in-one box, it just got overwhelmed. So then we had to go from all-in-one to seven servers. And then you have to realize, are these virtual servers? And can I expand on these servers? So we decided to go virtual so that we could, on the fly, add more processing power to it, we could add more RAM to it, do some of those things that would allow us to actually scale our solution so that we could still meet the demand of all the logs that would be coming in. Um, but besides that, that's, those are really some of those main things inside of um, the sims that you're going to want to um, consider and worry about. But um, there's probably a lot more questions than um, that I could have, I didn't cover for you, so I want to throw it out there to you guys. What questions do you have about Sims? What's some things that worry you and some things that you might want solutions for? Um, so the question was, what are some good plugins for Elk for correlation? So off the top of my head, I could, I think afterwards you and I can talk. There's a lot of plugins on Elk or inside of GitHub that we'd, we'd want to take a look at. Um, one of the main ones that was released at DEF CON, um, the team at Etsy released a plugin that really helped visualize that data. So I could get that to you after. Right, and, and I guess that, that goes back to that internal investment. So the question was, um, are we doing anything to automate or to orchestrate some automatic responses? And so if you have that internal investment, definitely. Um, on the commercial solution, we had the option that we could blacklist IPs automatically. Um, we could shut down like a newly created account automatically, things like that. Um, those are definitely options. But unfortunately for us, we didn't have the buy-in of those teams. They didn't trust the tool enough to allow us to be able to shut down those accounts or those things. They thought we'd kind of interrupt their flow. So.
So, any other questions? So the question was on, on data overload. So yeah, um, there's definitely some options out there. I don't know what um, sim you're using, but so the, w the best thing that we did is we'd actually set up more collectors. Um, so I don't know if you guys use a system that has more collectors or if you're just using a one system setup, but I would probably recommend expanding to multiple systems um, because we hit that same thing because the sim would receive those logs, it'd have to archive it, and then correlate it to events, then save it, send it over to the data processor. So the more collectors you have, that spreads that load, and so then the data processor can actually handle it from there. Yeah. Correct, yeah, so like he was saying, Another option is to use an, a syslog server, and then you could just filter out the events as well. So any time that you want to hit, there's, there are um, companies that built solutions just for that, for integrating within cloud environments where they only give you so little data, so that kind of helps your messages per second, so that you're not hit as heavily on that license. Any other questions? Okay, if not, that's my talk. Um, and I hope you guys got some, some good content out of this. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be sure to answer them. Thank you.